Hi, I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about the gatekeeper organization in our area. Now our state is not known for offering good supports or services to those with special needs or anybody who needs extra support. This involves a lot of different areas, school, therapies, sports, extracurricular activities, you name it. Fortunately, we do have a few organizations that do support these individuals. The main one in our area is called Desert Regional Center, or DRC. Now they've been around forever, and they focus on offering supports to adults with special needs. They offer a variety of different services and supports, and because of all of this, they're often called the gatekeeper in our area. Many other organizations will require you to have an open DRC case as part of their application process. So as usual, when I started this process, there are a whole slew of papers that I had to fill out. It's nothing new really, it was all kind of the same stuff over and over, it was just kind of tedious, partly because I was doing it again. For the how many time this time? Yeah. But even though it looked like it was rather long and the application seemed kind of thick, it actually went f faster than I expected and when I actually sat down to complete it. Fortunately, we were also able to speed up the process of being approved a little bit because technically this was a reopen. It wasn't a brand new case. When AJ was younger, we had a Medicaid waiver program. And as part of that application process, we had to have an open DRC case. Remember, I said they're the gatekeepers. So when we had the open Medicaid case, we had an open DRC case. Now at that point, because they worked almost exclusively with adults and AJ was still a minor, they didn't really have any services they could offer us. So when we lost Medicaid, I thought we lost DRC as well and then we closed the case. Okay, no big deal. Well, now AJ is an adult and we're applying for him to qualify on his own. So I noted on the application that this was a reopen and I put his old case number on there and I submitted the form. Um, I, then the next step was to set up an intake interview with the gal that I submitted the application to. So I set that up, took AJ in with me, and I really tried to make him answer all of the questions. It was interesting though that the gal who was doing the interview made the observation that he would usually look to me for answers. Well, I'm not answering for you, dude. This is part of being an adult. So I would usually re-ask the question to him and then he would answer. When the interview was over, there was one more test that they need us to complete. And we did one section where the gal was asking AJ the questions directly. But there were other sections that we didn't think he would be able to answer himself. And so rather than let him sit there and be bored and maybe even a little embarrassed as I'm kind of tattling on him, um, we set up a call for a couple days later. So once we got that call done and we finished the test, the gal went back and had somebody else score the test and she thought that was everything that she would need to complete our application. A few days later, she called me and said, yes, everything is complete. I have everything that you need, that we need for um, completing his application. And yes, you qualify. So she was gonna present his case in their weekly meeting a few days later. She did warn me that it would probably be a little bit of time between that meeting and when we actually received confirmation of our acceptance and who our caseworker would be. Well, I finally got a call from our caseworker four months later. Yeah, we obviously fell through the cracks there. Now, admittedly, part of it's on mine. I wasn't the squeaky wheel, and so we, you know, like I said, we fell through the cracks. But I am so amazed with the conversation that I did have with this caseworker. She gave me so much good information. It was, I'm so excited to have her. She was able to give me ideas on where to find guidance on how to find guardianship information and what the different options are for guardianship. Um, where to find information on a special needs trust and how to get one. She gave me some details on how to apply for, for SSI and gave me some baby steps that I could take that'll help me take, oh, take away some of the overwhelm that I felt um, trying to apply for this. Now, I will do a post in a couple weeks on SSI, so we'll get to that later, but just know that this is one organization that can help me with that. She also made some suggestions on how we could modify AJ's IEP to better prepare him for work and offered to go with me to his next meeting. Yep, definitely taking her up on that one. So we set up a, a meeting to, to get together so that she could meet AJ, we could officially open his case and get the paperwork done that we needed to now that his case is opened. And then she got sick. So we're back in a waiting pattern, we need to reschedule it, which means I probably need to be contacting her again. I'm really looking forward 
to getting to meet her though and to be able to see what other kind of guidance she can help. In the course of this conversation though, I also discovered that we didn't have to close our case with them all these years ago. There was some miscommunication. Like I said, I thought that when we lost Medicaid, we lost DRC. What she said was that no, they could have been providing guidance and suggested resources all of this time, although they wouldn't have been able to provide us with any financial assistment, assistance. Well, that was kind of frustrating, but it's in the past. The case is reopened, we're moving on. So now when I meet with this caseworker, I have a number of questions that I wanna ask her about. First of all, work placement. I've been told they can possibly help him find a job or maybe, and f help him with, provide a job coach to help him keep the job because it's been mentioned that sometimes keeping a job is as hard for somebody with special needs as actually getting the job. I also want to ask her about what housing and living arrangements are. This is one of the main organizations that has the group homes that we mentioned and so I want to see what this situation is there and how exactly that works. I want to see if they have any social activities that AJ could start getting involved with or if they have respite services, especially before he moves out. And I don't know what other, else, other services they offer. I want to ask and see if there's anything else that we could be taking advantage of. So you're probably wondering how this applies to you. Well, here's a few thoughts that I have. First of all, see if there's a similar organization in your area. I'm guessing there is. Now, I found out about this one from AJ's teacher and from that transition meeting that I've mentioned in the past. Now, at this transition meeting, they had representatives from a bunch of different organizations, and it was really helpful to have them all in one place where we could talk to them, get contact information, all those kinds of things. And it helped take away some of the overwhelm because I was able to get solid information all at once. Now, if you don't have a school in, a school connection like that, then I think about seeing if you have medical professionals or a welfare office, a work assistance office that might be able to point you in the right direction. Or maybe just call a local high school or a local college and see if they have any recommendations from organizations that they work with. You might also check with local organizations that work with individuals with special needs, things like Goodwill or Easter Seals or United Way, those kind of places. So my question for you is this, have you opened a case for your loved one? What was the process like? I'd love to hear what your experiences were and to find out how things work in different areas of the country. I really hope that your experience has been as positive as ours is, although unfortunately I know that's not always the case. I would appreciate it if you'd share this with anybody that you think would find it helpful. I'd love to help as many families as possible. You can sign up for my blog over, or sign up for my email list over on the blog at www.havenofhopeforme.com. There you'll find out about all the different pieces to this transition process and, and obtaining services for your loved ones, as well as other new content as it's released. I strive to only send out things that I think you'll find helpful, informational, and useful. I am so grateful to have had this contact and to have this case opened. I'm blessed with a, con with a um, advocate and in our caseworker. And as I'm always saying, life is good and there is never a dull moment.